this is an amazing evening. This is a, uh, we are going to unveil a statue and it's an amazing uh, addition to our Main Street. I want to welcome Mrs. Skelton to Vincent. Every time she's here, there's an event going on and it's always amazing to have you here. Also, I want to welcome Nick, the, uh, the individual that designed this statue and his mother, Gail. I really think this is an amazing addition to our Main Street. I can't wait for you to see it. I had the opportunity to see it because I helped install it. Uh, I want to thank Ann for all the work she's put into this to make this happen. Uh, I want to thank Bryce and his crew at the street department, as well as a um, Keith Loudermilk from Hendrickson Concrete and Construction and thank Hendrickson Construction for their help with installing this, as well as John Sprague, the city engineer. So, uh, welcome. I know you're going to be excited when you see this, so I'll turn this over to Shiloh. Good evening. Welcome, all. Uh, the Red Scout Museum has been a huge asset to the tourism industry in Knox County, bringing thousands of visitors to Vincent's annually. Uh, the sculpture will help... I'm sorry. The statue... Uh, will continue to help us share Red's legacy and, and here in downtown Vincennes. Catherine, thank you. And it is awesome. Just to kind of follow up with what Shyla said, it's always been our dream to, you know, we have the museum over, of course, on Vincent University campus, but Main Street has become so amazing in the last few years that it's been really exciting for us to watch it grow, and we wanted to have a little piece of that. So the Red Skelton statue here, and we're ultimately going to have um, a sign behind it, like a reader sign where people can learn a little bit about to who it is, why it's here, also about the Red Skelton Museum. So all our tourists that come to town and wander down this incredible Main Street will get a chance to see the Red Skelton statue and also then learn that we have more about Red Skelton a little bit further across town. But um, before I introduce the sculptor, Nick, I do want to tell what I call the Red Skelton story. Now, I always have to preface this, especially because our curator, Mark, is here, and he likes to hold me to the truth, but I'm like Red. You know, if you want the truth, you ask Mark. If you want a good story, you ask me. So, anyway, we, we have not been able to prove the complete veracity of this story, but Red told it numerous, numerous times. So, here we go. Red says, uh, when I was about 10 years old, I would have to sell newspapers in front of the Pantheon Theater because we were hungry and I had to help my mom to feed the family. So young 10-year-old Red Skelton is standing out here in front of the, the Pantheon selling his newspapers and he says a very fancy dressed man came by. And Red said, he asked if he was going to the show that night. Red said, no, 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 I need to sell my papers and besides, we can't really afford a ticket. Well, he said the man gave him a dollar. And in those days, that bought all the rest of Red's papers and he told him if he came back to the theater that night, there would be a ticket waiting for him. Red said he ran all the way home and told his mom, he said she was so excited she even gave me a nickel for popcorn. <laughs> Red came back to the theater that night. Sure enough, there was a ticket waiting for him. He went into the theater. He said he was sitting there in his seat, the curtains open. He said he started elbowing the lady next to him. Hey, hey, that's my friend, that's my friend. Well, the very fancy dressed man who had bought Red's papers was comedian Ed Wynn. At intermission, Ed Wynn invited Red backstage, and Red said when he peered out those lead-weighted curtains and saw that audience, he knew right then what he wanted to do was to make people laugh. So right here in front of the Pantheon Theater, and we like to think right in this exact spot, Red Skelton was inspired to go into show business and ultimately become the superstar that he was. So it's only fitting that we have this statue here commemorating that, that story that Red told. And so I'm going to let Nick say a few words. He's our sculptor, an Indiana boy by birth, but a South Carolinian by choice. So here he is. That is so lovely. Hey, good evening, art lovers. Hey, uh, Ring Studios is delighted to bring Little Red back to the streets of uh, and the caretaking of this wonderful museum. Uh, and to sell his newspapers and, and proudly shout out the good news 
the university will not close its doors. <laughs> hey, a positive headline. That's kind of refreshing, right? Uh, hey, uh, thanks uh, to all who made this memorial happen. Uh, special thanks to Anne uh, for her vision and perseverance and time and her correspondence and headaches with me. Um, it wasn't too bad, though, was it? Okay. Uh, and, and we, Ring Studio and family, sincerely thank you for this commission. It is our hope that it will be enjoyed by many generations to come. All right, one more thing, Loki, if you'll join me up here. We have Mrs. Skelton here, and um, one special thing about this statue, uh, the funds for this statue were donated by an incredibly generous donor who wishes to remain anonymous. However, this statue is dedicated to the memory of Jim McCormick, and he was the first person who approached Mrs. Skelton way back in 1998. January the 17th, I'll never forget it. <laughs> and he went out to California and told her that we needed a museum here, didn't we? To remember him. So we have a beautiful stone here. It says, in lovely memory of C. James McCormick, Red Scout Museum dedicated founder. So this stone will be right here by the statue, forever commemorating Jim's dedication to Red Scout and to the Red Scout Museum. Now I'm gonna let you tell a little bit more about how everything went down. Um, well, it all started in 1999. Was that what you would like me to tell about? Okay. Uh, Jim McCormick and Dr. Summers came to see me at a Hotel Marriott in the uh, Palm Desert area, and they showed me a beautiful rendering of the Performing Arts Center. And I thought, oh my God, all my dreams come true. This is wonderful, wonderful. So after that reaction, ground was broken. It all started, there was a Mayor Mooney, I believe his name was. And I was so proud, little by little by little, they built this absolutely fabulous uh, performing, uh, performing arts center, the theater. And uh, I'm utterly grateful for it because since Red couldn't own the Pantheon, he loved it, but it wasn't available for him, for him to own it. <laughs> he has his own theater now. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful to the university, I'm grateful to all of you that stood behind Red's desire to be uh, a, th a theater named in his honor. So uh, I'm very, very proud. Of course, Jim McCormick made it possible for us to have a museum. He uh, had uh, a fire in one of his uh, complexes and he decided instead of building the complex back again, to build a museum to join the Performing Arts Center. I think I'm right, yep. and uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm very grateful for that. I want to uh, acknowledge uh, Jane Whistle, his daughter uh, in particular. She's been a good friend, as the whole McCormick family. And uh, just thank you, all of you, for caring as much as you do about Red, because I love the guy. I love him completely.